Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And today I am feeling very excited to bring to you another original challenge of mine based on rotational mechanics. So let me present to you the challenge. A bolt of thread radius R and pitch P is welded on a horizontal surface such that the axis of the bolt makes an angle theta with the horizontal as shown. So just imagine maybe we have a horizontal surface here and uh, uh, we have welded this bolt such that this angle is theta with the horizontal and then we have put a net nut fitting nut inside and this is a frictionless bolt as i'll see uh, read out in the problem okay okay so the axis of the bolt makes an angle theta with the horizontal as shown a fitting nut of mass capital m this mass is capital m nut and moment of inertia i so about this axis the moment of inertia of this nut is i okay about the bolts axis can move on the threads without friction so it can move it's absolutely frictionless okay so it can move without friction calculate the torque of the normal reaction from the threads acting on the nut about the bolts axis see so this bolt uh, uh, if it's frictionless obviously it will be going like this and it will finally reach the bottom of the uh, bolt this nut will keep on rotating and we have to find out how much is the torque because of normal reaction acting on this nut okay and acceleration due to gravity is given as g so what data is given the uh, thread radius is given r uh, so uh, threads are not very uh, large in size so inner radius outer radius don't worry about it you can think r as the inner radius uh, itself so because uh, the threads are not very wide okay and the pitch is given as p and the mass is given as m theta is given and moment of inertia is given and g is given so we have to find the answer in terms of these variables so if you want you can give give it a try on your own and uh, uh, then you can have a look at my solution and i'll get into my analysis right away okay so let's see so what are the conceptual ideas that i'm going to use in the solution so first thing that i'm going to use is the torque of gravity about uh, bolts axis is zero because center of mass lies on the axis see bolt center of mass will be at the midpoint of the bolt and that's lies on the axis of the bolt itself right so the torque of this mg about the axis must be zero because this mg passes through the axis itself so that means what gravity cannot provide any uh, i mean whatever is the angular acceleration that can that's not due to gravity okay because torque of gravity about the axis is zero okay center of mass of the bolt lies on the axis also since the friction is absent the angular acceleration of the bolt is due to the torque of normal reaction alone so it's only because of normal reaction that this bolt is rotating so that's responsible for providing the angular acceleration okay then what is the other observation that i can use in this problem first thing is that uh, angular acceleration is only because of uh, torque of normal reaction second thing is from energy consideration it can be readily seen that g cos theta component of gravity is irrelevant and g sin theta can be treated as effective gravity with bolt being a vertical so see uh, uh, this bolt is going to move in this direction and uh, you can resolve the g vector as uh, g is acting downward so g has a component g cos theta in this direction but you know that bolt has got no motion in this direction bolt is going to uh, rather nut has got no motion in this direction nut is only going to translate in the direction of g sin theta so we can say from the energy perspective we can just ignore the g cos theta because no motion is happening in g cos theta direction gravity is not doing work because of g cos theta gravity is only doing work because of g sin theta in this direction so if you want to, to use energy considerations you can as well ignore the g cos theta that's what i mean so g cos theta component of gravity is irrelevant so g sin theta can be treated as effective gravity and with the bolt being vertical so this is what i mean so just consider this as vertical and apply g sin theta downwards okay <clears throat> now since there are no non conservative forces mechanical energy must be conserved so there is no friction anywhere so mechanical energy is conserved now let us consider the fall of the bolt through one pitch so let us say it rotates by some uh, angle of uh, i mean it rotates through an angle 2 pi and then it falls down through one pitch and for ease of visualization let us unwrap the unwrap one thread so it is having threads around this so i am just what i am doing i am unwrapping the thread just to visualize what kind of inclination this thread has with respect to our effective gravity so you know that when you unwrap the thread uh, this horizontal distance is going to be 2 pi r why because uh, complete circumference of the bolt is 2 pi r and this vertical height is uh, pitch because uh, when uh, in one complete turn the screw advances by 
pitch so this horizontal is 2 pi r and vertical is pitch so i can say that the angle of the threads with the horizontal must be phi tan phi is p upon 2 pi r and accordingly i can also find cos phi and sin phi that's equation number 2 and 3 where phi is the angle of inclination of the threads with respect to the horizontal and when i am saying horizontal it means the with respect to new gravity i have forgotten g cos theta altogether so horizontal and vertical i mean with respect to g effective okay assuming that g effective is vertically downward okay so now by conservation of mechanical energy so what is the loss in potential energy when the block when the nut comes down through uh, distance p so loss in potential energy is mg sin m into g sin theta into p see mgh is the loss in potential energy so instead of g i have put g sin theta and instead of h i have put p so that's the loss of potential energy in one pitch movement and this should be equal to gain in kinetic energy of the uh, nut so now nut has got two types of motion one is it is uh, rotating and other motion is it is translating so there is some translational kinetic energy uh, due to velocity in downward direction and there is some rotational kinetic energy because of rotation and fortunately these two uh, velocities due to rotation and velocity due to translation are in mutually perpendicular directions right so we can just simply add the two kinetic energies directly because they are mutually perpendicular so you know that when two vectors are perpendicular so we can write resultant uh, square of the resultant as simply v1 square plus v2 square so something like that so kinetic energy because of rotation is half i omega square and because of translation suppose its uh, velocity along the inclination of the threads is v then horizontal component of this velocity is v cos phi and the vertical component is v sin phi and therefore angular velocity must be what angular velocity then since horizontal velocity is omega into small r so that means omega must be equal to v and horizontal component of this becomes v cos phi so v cos phi divided by r is the angular velocity of the bolt okay so this is equation number 4 and kinetic energy is loss in potential energy is equal to half i omega square that is kinetic energy due to rotation about the axis and plus half m v sin phi square see if it is uh, having v component along the thread then its vertical component must be then v uh, sin phi right because uh, if this angle is phi this is 90 minus phi so this is v sin phi so this is kinetic energy due to translation in the downward direction along the bolt and this is due to the rotation okay and uh, what can I write for uh, V? So V, you see, omega is V cos phi by R. So V is nothing but omega R upon cos phi. But then uh, we have omega R upon cos phi for V, but there's also sin phi. So sin phi upon cos phi will become tan phi. So if you simplify equation five, this becomes equation six. And now I have only omega here, okay? So I can find uh, omega from this equation. Uh, and then you know that uh, omega square minus omega naught square is twice alpha delta theta omega square minus omega naught square is twice alpha delta theta we can use that and initial omega is 0 and therefore omega and uh, delta theta is 2 pi y because we have uh, fallen down through a pitch of 2 pi right so since one pitch is angle turned one pitch angle turned is 2 pi so omega square is 2 alpha and delta theta is 2 pi so I can substitute omega square in this equation and if I put omega square in this equation, then in this equation, the only unknown remains alpha. And I can directly find out the value of alpha. And once I have the value of alpha from this equation, uh, then I can find torque as simply I into alpha. Okay. So uh, roundabout manner. Generally, you use torque to find alpha. But here we have done it other way around. We have found alpha to find the torque. And we have found alpha by energy considerations, right? So this is also a very effective technique. You can use it in many rotational problems. I have seen so many problems where this technique is more effective than the torque method. We can find out angular acceleration using energy, okay? So I hope you got my point. So equation seven, you can put it here and then solve for alpha. And then how will you find torque? And of course, tan phi is what? Tan, tan phi is pitch upon two pi r. You can see directly this was p and this is two pi r. So tan phi is p by 2 pi r and uh, that you can put here and omega you can put as this and then you can use tau is equal to i alpha. So if you just do the maths, a little bit of maths, finally what do you get? This is what you get finally. Okay. So this is our answer and this must be the torque due to normal reaction i into alpha because there is nothing else which is providing the torque. So it must be the torque due to the normal reaction alone which is rotating the nut okay so that's my analysis for this uh, original problem on rotational mechanics i hope you enjoyed my analysis and if you enjoyed the analysis please do give it a thumbs up and let me know how you like this video in the comment section and uh, please do share it with as many friends as possible 
through whatsapp telegram or uh, uh, discord servers or whatever uh, media you might be using for uh, networking with your fellow students who are preparing for iit je or olympiads and uh, most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to post a new video every day and uh, thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you